Hello again, I'm back. Uh, we're going to be doing uh, Descartes' Rules of Science. I don't actually know if I pronounce his name right. Uh, that's not really my specialty, math is. And basically you can use this when you're uh, trying to figure out zeros in a polynomial. And I usually put p of x, but this time I'm going to put f of x. You know, a function of x, you could put a function of p, it doesn't really matter. But we got a polynomial here and it reads x cubed plus 7x squared subtracted by 36. And basically what we're trying to do is figure out how many times it hits the x-axis. Uh, it's got to have three zeros. Now, what I mean by that is it, the zeros could be on the uh, positive side of the x-y axis, they could be on the negative side of the x-y axis, or they can just be imaginary zeros, which means they don't hit the x-axis, but they have to be accounted for. So, uh, real positive zeros just means on the right side of the x-axis, real negative zeros means on the left side, and imaginary zeros. Uh, one thing that you also have to keep into consideration is that the number zero is not actually on there. So you do have to use zero as a testing point as well. And it's not too bad, it's pretty cool. So I'm going to show you how to do this, how to find real positive zeros. Now when you're doing real positive zeros, all you're doing is uh, uh, seeing how many sign changes there are in a polynomial. So this goes from positive to the positive, so it's not a real sign change. Uh, this goes from positive to negative, so that's one sign change, which means that there's one real zero. That's pretty much it. Now, um, if there were three sign changes, it doesn't mean that there's three real positive zeros. It means that there's three real positive zeros or one real positive zero. That's how it works. It goes down in multiples of two for uh, these functions. So let's say I had four sign changes. It could be four uh, real positive zeros, two real positive zeros, or zero real positive zeros. It always goes in uh, increments of two, uh, multiples of two. Okay, real negative zeros now. What you have to do in order to figure out real negative zeros is replace uh, positive x with negative x. So f of negative x. And when I do that, I've got uh, negative x to the third plus 7 negative x squared. So every time I see an x, I just put a negative x. Subtracted by 36. Now this is pretty interesting. Negative x times negative x times negative x, or it's negative x three times, so it's negative x cubed. Negative x squared is uh, negative x times negative x, which is positive x squared, times 7, which is plus 7x squared, and then subtracted by 36. I'm going to go ahead and put my f of negative x there, but I need a different mark to do so. So in this case, it goes from negative to positive, and from positive to negative. So there's one, two sign changes there. So the answer for negative or real negative zeros, pardon me, could be two or zero. Now I don't really know which one it is out of curiosity, but you know we'll see how it goes. Uh, what's really interesting here is the imaginary zeros. Now you have two options. It could be one real zero and two real zeros, and uh, that means that there has to be three total, which means none. Or it could be one and zero, which is one, and then you have two left over. So that's what we're working with here. You have one real zero, that's a given that you're working with. You have two or zero real negative zeros on the negative side of the x-axis, and you have zero or two imaginary zeros. And what we do is we use this information uh, with the zero factor theorem, and it's not a bad way to do it. It's not the best way in my opinion. I mean, obviously if you can factor first, um, or you use synthetic division first, you do that. But it's a, a method that students really like, and you know, it's pretty much the standard method to use on all types of problems like this if you're trying to figure out zeros. So we'll get to that after that. Uh, I really don't have anything else to say about Descartes' rules of signs. You know, that's pretty much it. But it, you're, you're going to be either working with this problem that we do on the very next lesson with one real zero, uh, one real positive zero, two real negative zeros, and then none, uh, no imaginary zeros, or you're going to be working with one, zero, and two. It's got to be a combination that adds up to three. So that adds up to three, that adds up to three. Uh, with that said, we'll get to that pretty soon. Have a good day for now. Goodbye.